Hello and welcome back to Friday Reads where we help you find your next read. I'm Jill. And I'm Julie and we're out and about again in Kimberly and today we are out at the Heart of the Valley YMCA and Jill and I are sitting in the dance studio there. Yeah. Not going to make a video of our dance moves. <laughs> we're here because they do a book club with the Kimberly Public Library, and we're going to suggest some books that might be good for a book club discussion. So, Jill, what's your first pick? So, my first pick is actually a book club <clears throat> selection that's done here at the Y, because the Y does have a book club, in case you're interested. It is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Uh, this won the Goodreads Choice Award for the Best Winner of Best Fiction for 2020, which is the year that it was published. Between life and death, there's a library, and within that library, the shelves go on forever. Every book provides a chance to try another life you could have lived, to see how things would be if you had made other choices. Would you have done anything different if you had the chance to undo your regrets? A novel about choices that go into a life well lived. Somewhere out beyond the edge of the universe, there's a library that contains an infinite number of books, each one a story of another reality. One tells the story of your life as it is, along with another book for another life you could have lived if you had made different choice at any point in your life. While we all wonder how our lives might have been, what if you had the chance to go to the library and see for yourself? Would any of these other lives truly be better? Nora Seed finds herself faced with this decision, faced with the possibility of changing her life for a new one, following a different career, undoing old breakups, realizing her dreams of becoming a glaciologist. She must search within herself as she travels through the midnight library to decide what is truly fulfilling in life and what makes it worth living in the first place. So sounds like there's a lot to discuss in this book. So it makes a good book club discussion book. My first pick is a book from 2023, March of 2023, and it's Beyond That, The Sea by Laura Spence Ash. And it is, as German bombs fall over London in 1940, working class parents Millie and Reginald Thompson make an impossible choice. They decide to send their 11-year-old daughter Beatrix to America. There she'll live with another family for the duration of the war where they hope she'll stay safe. Scared and angry, feeling lonely and displaced, B arrives in Boston to meet the Gregories, Mr. and Mrs. G, and their sons, William and Gerald, fold B seamlessly into their world. She becomes part of this lively family, learning their ways and their stories, adjusting to their affluent lifestyle. She grows close to both boys, one older and one younger, and fills in the gap between them. Before long, before she even realizes it, life with the Gregories feels more natural to her than the quiet spare life with her own parents back in England. As she comes into herself and relaxes into her new life, summers on the coast in Maine, new friends clamoring to hear about life across the sea, the girl she had been begins to fade away until abruptly she is called home to London when the war ends. Desperate as she is not to leave this life behind, she dutifully retraces her trip across the Atlantic back to her new old world. As she returns to post-war London, the memory of her American family stays with her, never fully letting her go, and always pulling on her heart as she tries to move on and pursue love and life on her own. As we follow B over time, navigating between her two worlds, this book emerges as a beautifully written, absorbing novel full of grace and heartache, forgiveness and understanding, loss and love. So again, a lot of topics to yeah. explore in a book club. And one of the things when I was looking up what makes a good book is typically a book between like 200 and 400 pages. So it falls in there and pretty much widely available since it was from March of last year. So beyond that, the sea. <clears throat> So my next book is Yellow Face by K R F R F Kong. <laughs> Athena Lu is a literary darling, and June Hayward is literally nobody. White lies. When Athena dies in a freak accident, accident, June steals her unpublished manuscript and publishes at her own under an ambiguous name, Juniper Song dark humor, but as evidence threatens June's stolen success, she will discover exactly how far she will go to keep what she thinks she deserves. Deadly consequences. What happens next is entirely everyone else's fault. <laughs> with its total immersive <laughs> first-person voice, Yellowface grapples with the questions of diversity, racism, and cultural appropriation, as well as the terrifying alienation of social media. R.F. Quang's novel is timely, razor-sharp, and eminently readable. This was published in 2023, and it is a book club selection for one of the book clubs at the library this month. So I just yeah. listened to that a month or two ago. Yeah. <clears throat> 
second pick is River Sing Me Home by Eleanor Shear, also published back in 2023. Her search begins with an ending. The master of the Providence Plantation in Barbados gathers his slaves and announces the king has decreed an end to slavery. As of the following day, the Emancipation Act of 1834 will come into effect. The cries of joy fall silent when he announces that they are no longer his slaves. They are now his apprentices. No one can leave. They must work for him for another six years. Freedom is just another name for the life they have always lived. So Rachel runs. Away from Providence, she begins a desperate search to find her children, the five who survived birth and were sold. Are any of them still alive? She just has to know. The grueling, dangerous journey takes her from Barbados, then by river, deep into the forest of British Guyana, and finally across the sea to Trinidad. She's driven on by the certainty that a mother cannot be truly free without knowing what has become of her children, even if the answer is going to be more than she can bear. These are the stories of Mary Grace, Micah, Thomas, Augustus, Cherry, Jane, and Mercy. But above all, this is the story of Rachel and the extraordinary lengths to which a mother will go to find her children and her freedom. So mm. this one is going on my list of books to read, River Sing Me Home by Eleanor Shear. That one does look good. <laughs> so my next pick was from our friends at the Brown County Library. They have a longtime book club there, and they have recently posted on Facebook, like, some of the books that they thought were great discussions for them over the years. So this is one of them, The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diffenball. The Victorian language of flowers was used to convey romantic expressions, honeysuckle for devotion, asters for patience, and red roses for love. But for Victoria Jones, it's been more useful in communicating mistrust and solitude. After a childhood spent in the foster care system, she is unable to get close to anybody, and her only connection to the world is through flowers and their meanings. Now 18 and emancipated from the system with nowhere to go, Victoria realized she has a gift for helping others through the flowers she chooses for them. But an unexpected encounter with a mysterious stranger has her questioning what's been missing in her life. And when she's forced to confront a painful secret from her past, she must decide whether it's worth risking everything for a second chance at happiness. So this was published in 2011. Language hmm. of Flowers. My next pick is a newer book. This came out this year, so it might be a little harder to find for a book club right now, but this is Family, Family by Lori Frankel. Not all stories of adoption are stories of pain and regret. Not even most of them. Why don't we ever get that movie? <laughs> India Elwood grew up wanting to be an actor, armed with a stack of index cards for research, line memorization, makeshift confetti. She goes from awkward 16-year-old to Broadway ingenue to TV superhero. Her new movie is a prestige picture about adoption, but its spin is the same old tired story of tragedy. India is in an adoptive mom in real life, though. She wants everyone to know there's more to her family than pain and regret. So she does something you should never do. She tells a journalist the truth. It's a bad movie. Soon she's at the center of a media storm, battling accusations from the press and the paparazzi, from protesters on the right and advocates on the left. Her twin 10-year-olds know they need help, and who better to call than family? But that's where it gets really messy because India is not just an adoptive mother. The one thing she knows for sure is what makes a family isn't blood and it isn't love. No matter how they're formed, the truth about family is this, it's complicated. So <laughs> this is some high praise from Reese Witherspoon and Leon Moriarty, so the Seattle Times. So maybe as this book gets circling more, check out Family, Family that by Lori Frankel. Oh. <laughs> Family, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> This is another suggestion from the Brown County Libraries Book Club, The Poet X, which is middle, or is not middle grade, it's young adults, mm -hmm. by Elizabeth Acevedo, was published in 2018. Zamara Batista feels unheard and unable to hide her heart in her Harlem neighborhood. Ever since her body grew into curves, she has learned to let her fists and her fierceness do her talking. But Zamara has plenty she wants to say, and she pours all her frustration and passion into the pages of a leather notebook, reciting the words to herself like prayers, especially after she catches feelings for a boy in her bio class named Aman, and who her family can never know about. 
With mommy's determination to force her daughter to obey the laws of the church, Zamaro understands that her thoughts are best kept to herself. So when she is invited to join her school's slam poetry club, she doesn't know how she could ever attend without her mommy finding out. But she still can't stop thinking about performing her poems. Because in the face of the world that may not want to hear her, Zamara refuses to be silent. So, yeah, the poet X. I think it might be written in verse as well. Oh, so fun. That's kind of Those fun. are always cool books. My next pick is also from last year, and this is Shark Heart by Emily Habeck. I like the cover on this one. I do too. <laughs> Newlyweds face the unimaginable in this epic tale about marriage, motherhood, and enduring love. For Lewis and Wren, their first year of marriage is also their last. A few weeks after their wedding, Lewis receives a rare diagnosis. He will retain most of his consciousness, memories, and intellect, but his physical body will gradually turn into a great white shark. As Lewis develops the features and impulses of one of the most predatory creatures in the ocean, his complicated artist's heart struggles to make peace with his unfulfilled dreams. At first, Wren in Eternally resists her husband's fate. Is there a way for them to be together after Lewis changes? Then a glimpse of Lewis's developing carnivorous nature activates long repressed memories for Wren, whose story vacillates between her childhood living on a houseboat in Oklahoma, her time with a college ex girlfriend, and her unusual friendship with a woman pregnant with twin birds. Woven throughout this bold novel is a story of Wren's mother, Angela, who becomes pregnant with Wren at 15 in an abusive relationship amidst her parents' crumbling marriage. In the present, all of Wren's grief eventually starts to collide, and she is forced to make impossible choices. This book was described as an unforgettable, gorgeous novel about life's perennial questions, the fragility of memories, finding joy amidst grief, and creating a meaningful life. So, very unusual book, but Lots of things Shark to Heart, and the person who talks about this book is Anthony Dorr from All the Light We Cannot oh, See, which yeah. is how I got linked into this one. So, <laughs> Shark Heart. That one looks good. If you do discuss that, let us know. <laughs> So my last one, I see this on a lot of things, and I think it's for book lovers in general. Storied Life of A.J. Fitkri by Gabrielle Zevin, which she also wrote Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which I also wanted to suggest. <laughs> <laughs> but only one per author today. <laughs> A.J. Fickery's life is not what he expected it to be. His wife has died, his bookstore has experienced the worst sales in history, and now his prized possession, a rare collection of Poe poems, has been stolen. Slowly but surely, he's isolating himself from all the people of Alice Island, from Lambias, he, the well-intentioned police officer who always felt kindly toward Fickery, from Ismay, his sister-in-law, who is hell-bent on saving him from his dreary self, from Amelia, the lovely and idealistic, if eccentric, lightly pressed sales rep who keeps on taking the ferry over to Alice Island, refusing to be deterred by AJ's bad attitude. Even the books in his store have stopped holding pleasure for him. These days, AJ can only see them as a sign of the world that is changing too rapidly. And then a mysterious package appears at the bookstore. It's a small package, but large in weight. And it's that unexpected arrival that gives AJ Fickery the opportunity to make his life over, the ability to see everything anew. It doesn't take long for the locals to notice the change overcoming AJ, or for that determined sales rep, Amelia, to see her curmudgingly client in a new light, or for the wisdom of all those books to become again the lifeblood of AJ's world, and for everything to twist again into a version of his life that he didn't see coming. As surprising as it is moving, the storied life of AJ Fickery is an unforgettable tale of transformation and second chances and irresistible affirmation of why we read and why we love. Why we read, that's a great thing for a <laughs> book club. There you go. <laughs> My last pick is a Good Morning America book club pick, and this was published back in 2020. I don't know if the cover shows real good on this one. This is 50 Words for Rain by Asha Lemmy, and this is actually a debut, I believe. Kyoto, Japan, 1948. If a woman knows nothing else, she should know how to be silent. Do not question, do not fight, do not resist. Such is eight-year-old Nori's first lesson. She will not question why her mother abandoned her with only these final words. She will not fight her confinement to the attic of her grandparents' imperial estate. And she will not resist the scalding chemical baths she receives daily to lighten her shameful skin. The illegitimate child of a Japanese aristocrat and her African-American GI lover, Nori is an outsider from her very birth. Though her grandparents take her in, they do so only to conceal her, fearful of a stain on their royal pedigree that they are so desperate to uphold in a changing Japan. 
Obedient to a fault, Noria accepts her solitary life for what it is, despite her natural intellect and nagging curiosity about what lies outside those attic walls. But when her chance brings her legitimate older half-brother, Akira, to the estate that is his inheritance and destiny, Nori finds him the first person who will allow her to question, and the siblings form an unlikely but powerful bond, a bond their formidable grandparents cannot allow and that will irrevocably change the lives they were always meant to lead. Because now that Nori has glimpsed a world in which perhaps there is a place for her after all, she's ready to fight to be a part of it. A battle that just might cost her everything. So, 50 Words for Rain. Again, another book that has, a, I think, a good discussion element. Yeah. When we looked up some pointers for book clubs, it's substantial enough for discussion, came up as number one on all the lists. And you want to know your audience, you want to make sure that you don't pick books that offend or cause discomfort to anybody. And again, we mentioned earlier, like 200 to 400 pages, kind of the sweet spot for book club books kind of avoid humor. I do that with the short story groups. Every so often I throw a short story in that's funny, but there's not a lot of discussion to it. So you need something a little bit more substantial. So we thank the Heart of the Valley YMCA for letting us come out this morning and visit them. And you can find our videos on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, on our website. And we thank you for watching. And we'd love to hear what your book clubs are reading. If you've got some recommendations for other book clubs, it's always nice to share. So until next time, thanks for watching.